James puts it this way. He says, show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. Why? Because God's word is what makes me who I am. Somebody can know it all. And, and there's supposedly some people who can quote the entire Bible. And, and to be honest with you, I have trouble sometimes remembering how a verse starts. <laughs> Yeah, or, or where it's at, or things of that nature. But just to know it doesn't change us. To meditate on it changes us. Do you ever get tired of something? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things we all may get tired of. But have you ever got tired of this? You know, it talks about Paul talking till midnight. I remember talking to my grandfather, and I, I miss talking to my grandfather because we would talk about this for hours. And, and I would ask him a question, and he would always start in Genesis. And he would always end up in Revelation. <laughs> but he would always answer the question. And you ever get tired of it? Because it's God's Word. And sometimes the physical body gets tired, doesn't it? Think about the disciples when they went to pray in the garden with, uh, with Christ. They fell asleep. And, and Christ asked them this question, can't you watch with me for just three hours? <clears throat> the body sometimes gets tired. And that brings us to verse 9. This young man, sometimes I feel sorry for him. This is the only reference to him in the Bible. He falls asleep, falls out of a window, he is dead, and he comes back to life. This is his only reference in the Bible. He fell asleep while Paul was preaching. <coughs> you know, and he died because of it. Fifteen minutes of life, man. <laughs> but take a look at the verse. Where was he? He was listening to God's word. And yes, he fell asleep. And yes, he was tired. And yes, it was going on and on and on, as it says. But he was with the church. He was there to hear what Paul had to say. I remember one time we all had been working all day in the vineyard. And we were trying to get the harvest in before the plant closes. And we had gotten up at 5 o'clock in the morning and got the tractors out there, was picking grapes all day long. We had taken the, the trucks into the factory that, that evening. Services started at 7. We got to church at 7 o'clock, and the evangelist got up there and said, Some of you all look kind of tired. We're going to stand up and sing and uh, do all kinds of different things to see if we can wake some of you up. And I was thinking, Why don't you just be quiet so I can go to sleep? <laughs> I don't know what his day had been like. I don't know, you know, maybe he had worked all day or or some of that nature. I don't know anything about this man, except for one thing. He is our brother in Christ. He was there to hear the Word of God. He was there because it was important to him to be there. And, and I don't think he picked the best place to sit. That's not what I mean. He may have been sitting there trying to get the cool air on his face so he could stay awake. I don't know. But <clears throat> he is there talks about him sinking into a deep sleep. I wonder if he was snoring. <laughs> Christ put it this way. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. There are so many times that we may want to do something or we may feel that we need to do something or that God may be asking us to do something 
and the mind is willing to do it. But how many of us have discovered we're not as young as we used to be? You see, my mind sometimes tells me I'm 20. My body reminds me that I'm not. We need to depend upon who? Christ. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Where does our strength come from? It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from come no. It doesn't come from what I can do. I just prove that. <laughs> it comes from what God can do. Thank you, Lord. It comes from His ability. How many of you are glad you don't have to do everything on your own? You know, I, I remember in the physical world, as a young kid, I would, there was all kinds of things I would try to do. No, I don't need help. I, I can do this on my own. But as I've got older, I, I look at it this way. Uh, come, and, come and help me with something. I'll ask the kids to come help me with something. Then I got smarter. Go do it. <laughs> And see, that's the same thing in the spiritual world. Sometimes we think we can do it on our own. And sometimes we think that we have the strength to where we can do it. And sometimes we think that it, it's all us. And then we think this, well, I'll get God to help me. You know, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is I'm still doing it. I'm getting God to help me. Well, finally, we finally get smart enough spiritually where we say, God, it's up to you. It's not up to me. I'm not going to do it. It's up to you. Go do it. You know, uh, like you're talking about the car. Yeah. You know, Lord, I'm, I'm tired of asking for it. Help. You know. And he did. And he did. Yeah. So as, as I look at this man, I see him as a picture of who we are sometimes. Sometimes we are asleep to what God can actually do. How much was this man hearing from what Paul was saying? Not much at all. I mean, he's going to be an illustration here in just a moment, but the thing of it is, sometimes we are tone deaf to what God has to say. Trust God. Trust what He can do. Now, like this man, he's overcome with sleep. He's sitting in the third story window. Maybe not the best choice of places to be. Fold out. What happens to it? Now, what, this is this is important because there are some commentators who will say, "Oh, he had a concussion." Uh, no, doesn't say that, does it, Jim? What happened to this man? He fell out of a third-story window. He died. And he he's dead. Taken up dead. Yes, taken up dead. Uh, I mean, if, if it was unconscious or something like that, they would say something like that. They, they weren't dummies. They, they knew what was what as far as that goes. And this man had fallen out of a window and he is taken up dead. Sure, I want you to go to Matthew 11, 7, if you will, uh, up there. And he asked a question. This is Christ asking a question. And he says, what did you come into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? And he's asking about John the Baptist. And he's asking, what did you come to see? Now, these people had come, go back to Acts, Char. These people had come to be with Paul to hear what Paul had to say. But something was about to happen. They didn't know what was going to happen, did they? They didn't know what was going to, to be there. So the question is, what did you come to see? And I could ask that same question this morning. What did you come for? Why are you here this morning? Did you just come to hear some of the songs? Did you just come to hear uh, a preacher talk about some things and hopefully make some sense? Uh, did you, what, what was it that you came for? 
Well, when we look at what Christ was talking about, he's talking about John the Baptist, and he says, what did you come to see? A reed shaken in the wind? What did you come for? They came to see Christ. They came to see God. As you think about coming back to here in Acts, what did they come for? This man has fallen out of the window. He has died, and he's dead. Paul, as you look at this next part of the verse, he says, do not trouble yourselves, for his life is within him. Shall we go to Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, if you will. We sometimes look at things and we say, that can't be done. Man fell out of the window. He's dead. He fell three floors. I don't know. I'm guessing as he fell out, he landed on his head or something of that nature. He's dead. That would stop a meeting in a hurry, wouldn't it? <laughs> but he's not going to stay dead. This is getting cold. <clears throat> what can God not do in this world? Think about that. And I know somebody's going to say sin, and that's that's all right because God can't sin. That's that's true. But what? is beyond the power of God. Well, if you look at this verse, and, and you go back to the story, he's talking about how hard it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And he says this, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. And then he says, with men this is impossible, so I want you to understand this. He's not talking about the gate in Jerusalem that's sometimes called the needle. He's talking about a needle with an eye in it that I try to put a piece of thread through and I can't see it and that messes it all up. That's the needle he's talking about. And with man, yes, that's impossible. Because, see, they could get a camel through that eye of needle in the gate. So it wouldn't be impossible, would it? It would be improbable or hard. But with man, it's impossible. So take your biggest needle, look at that eye, and ask yourself, can you get a camel through that eye of that needle? And your answer is going to be, that's impossible. God's answer is going to be, give me something hard. Give me something difficult. Give me something that, that I can show you my power with. You see, when we come before God and we bring a problem before God, we bring a request before God, and, and we sometimes we think, you know, this is just, uh, there's no answer to it. God's answer is, give me something hard. Give me something difficult. Because what can God not do for us? Well, I look at that and say, you know, there isn't much that I would put, there isn't anything I put on that list of what He can't do for us. Shall I go to the last verse there in Matthew? Matthew 16. You're Peter. I was talking about the faith that Peter just expressed. And on this rock I will build my church. And I want you to notice something there. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, the church has an enemy. Yes, the church has somebody who wants it stopped. But let me tell you something. He can't do it. It's impossible. God is the one who this is his church. Amen. God is the one who says this belongs to him. God is the one who says I will build my church and Satan himself can't stop it. As you think about what he is saying, and shall I go back to Acts there for a moment. This man had fallen out of a third story window. This man was dead. This man had put an end to the service, right? Oh, no, no. He had brought life back into the service because he was 
was dead and now he is walking and coming back into the service and he's not dead anymore. Say Lois got a little excited about her request. How excited do you think that church was that day about this man who was dead? They all saw him die, and now he is walking back into the service. How excited do you think they were? You see, we don't understand just what God can do. Sometimes we just don't understand. I look at this, I look at the things that we have, and I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about the things we have spiritually. And sometimes we talk about them, and sometimes we understand some things about them, but how many of us truly understand <coughs> everything God has for us right here, right now, right in His presence? And the answer to that is we don't always understand that. And don't feel too bad if you're sitting there going, well, I don't understand everything that God has for me because I'm standing up here saying I don't understand it either. Because He has so much more for us. Sure, go on. That's to verse 11 if you would. <coughs> Verse 10, again, though, it says, do not trouble yourselves. You don't have to go back into that. But verse 11. It says, when you come up, have broken bread and eaten. <coughs> and talk a long while. Yeah, even the broke daybreak. Little thing can bring new life into the worship of God. But this wasn't a little thing, was it? How many of these people do you think forgot this incident? How many of these people do you think went home from here and said, well, I have a little problem God can't do anything about it. How many of these people do you think went home and said, boy, that was a boring service. I sure wish Paul would have shut up sooner. <laughs> no, if he, would have, if he would have quit speaking at, at, at a decent hour, this wouldn't have happened. How many of you think that, that that's how they went home? Or maybe they got together for breakfast and they had a roast preacher. You know. <laughs> How many of you think they did that? I think they went home and did something like this. What a great God we have. Praise God. What a great God we have. He can do anything. I want to ask you, what, a, what can God do for you? He's a great God, isn't he? I mean, here, as you look at this, he raised this man up from the dead. And you re realize what it did? That was at midnight that he fell. It was at midnight that this happened. And they kept right on in the service until daybreak when Paul had to leave. How many of you would have loved to have been there at that service for just that, for just that moment? But we're there. We are there. We think about little things. And we think about big things. Nothing matches matches this. I remember, so, and it's something that God had done for us. And you would say the physics don't work, and it's true, the physics don't work. You would say that it's impossible, that it can't be done, and you'd be right. It was impossible. It couldn't be done. We were in a Ford Pinto. And that's the first mistake. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the brakes were bad in it, and we were still driving it. That was the second mistake. 
came across a place where we were going to get hit. There was no way we could avoid getting hit. We couldn't stop because the brakes were bad. But we managed to get through this point with the car and not hit anything on either side of the car. And that point where we tried to get through was narrower than the car. I mean, if you, you, you can try to go back through there with the Ford Pinto, and I'll guarantee you, you will hit both sides. Or you'll hit one side really hard. You see, God is still at work. Amen. God is still doing things. And see, I don't have a Ford Pinto anymore. <laughs> And I am not asking any of you to give me one. <laughs> God is still at work. And yes, that's a story from a long time ago. But the thing of it is, is he does things, doesn't he? When you think about God, think about who he is. Think about the things that are going on in your life. And the things that are happening in, in your life. And is there anything you cannot give to God? Now there are some things you may not give to God that you don't want to give to God. That you might think like I did when I was younger. I can do everything. Finally I got wise and decided that my kids can do everything. <laughs> is, so you may think that. But simply give it to God. Mm -hmm. Say, here it is. Don't worry about this guy. He's alive. Yeah, he fell out the third story window. Yeah, he died. Yeah, he fell asleep while Paul was preaching. You notice Paul didn't go down there and say, why'd you fall asleep while I was preaching? walked back in and they rejoiced. They praised God. The service continued until Paul had to leave. Why? Because of who our God is. You know he hasn't changed. He hasn't lost any of his power. He's still the same God. So the things we have to bring to him Guess what? He can take care of whatever they are. We can choose to live defeated and say, I have to deal with this on my own. Or we can choose to give it to God and let him take care of it. Now, granted, his answer may be that he gave to Paul one time. No, my grace is sufficient for you. That may be his answer, but his answer with his grace is sufficient means that he is right there all the time to help us through whatever that might be. We can choose to do it on our own, or we can choose to let God do it. God, it's yours. Amen. Take care of it. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Our Father, as we come to your name of Christ, but we thank you. We thank you for this story. We thank you for this event and this happening. We thank you that you have that power to take care of everything. And Lord, as we come to this time of invitation, as we, we go from this place, Lord, we just ask that you would help us to always put our trust in you in everything. And Lord, that we just give it to you. For we ask this in your name. Dayton, Jim and Claire come. You have problems? You have something that you believe is unfixable? You have a burden that you've been carrying all by yourself? Give it to God. And just say to him, here it is. I can't handle it. I can't take care of it. You do. Just like Lois 
have talked about it. Here it is, God. Yeah. It's yours. Amen. You take care of it. He did. I posted something the other day because it's so, so true. We become expert warriors. Yeah. We worry about everything. Yeah. Instead of worry, let's give it to God. Yeah. And let Him take care of it. As we stand and as we sing, is there something that you want to just lay at God's feet? You don't have to come up here. You can do it right where you're at. As we sing. Would you be free from the burden of sin? If power in the blood, power in the blood, would you for evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood.
I've been in this church a long time, and I love this church, and I know it's God's church. Yeah. And as we go through our lives and we struggle, as the message was today, with finances and the things that go on and what we see happening in the world with people walking away from God, the most important thing I feel that as an individual, as a Christian, that we can do is pray. Uh, because God is the one that controls all things. And, and please, as a church, take it serious if you don't mm -hmm. come to business meetings and you don't get involved in it that way, that the pray and the, the prayer is what our answer is. Yeah. And please keep that in prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. That God will take care of us. Yeah. Terry, I believe you will. Yeah. But I uh, also believe he asks us to pray. He does. Yeah. Three times. Three times. Three times. <laughs> Dick, I believe you have a closing song for us. Yes, we're going to close with the chorus of Our Great Thou Art. Let's all stand. Then sings my soul, my Savior God.